So my name is Ashley Owens. Um, my project is GIS and free roaming dog management using the suitability analysis to determine potential locations for oral rabies vaccines on the Navajo Nation. All right, so there are an estimated 250,000 free roaming dogs on the Navajo Nation. Um, free roaming dogs are any domestic dogs left unrestricted in their movements. So this includes owned and unowned dogs, sociable or feral. About 80% of domestic dogs uh, worldwide fall into this classification. So it's not just an issue specific to the Navajo Nation. Um, oh, but, uh, oral rabies vaccines can be used to help vaccinate dogs. Less than 20% of the dogs on the Navajo Nation are estimated to be vaccinated against rabies. And oral rabies solution, oral rabies vaccinations uh, can improve vaccination rates by letting ORV providers find dogs um, and, sorry, All right. It allows ORV providers to locate dogs from their vehicle and then bribe the dogs with baited vaccine packets, which you can see at the bottom there. They're usually made with fish meal or um, local baits like uh, bovine intestine or egg, anything that can keep that packet with the vaccine in it. Um, and so... It's uh, really useful when you have a large number of dogs that nobody outright owns and therefore maybe can't afford to take to a vet or can't coax into a car to get to a vet to be vaccinated in traditional ways. And so this is where GIS comes in. Um, if a large number of dogs are unaccounted for, then determining their preferred habitat would improve the chances of locating them to distribute the ORBs. Um, if costs prohibit traveling across the entire Navajo Nation, then suitability modeling can um, eliminate the uninhabitable areas and point ORV providers towards likely locations that support domestic dog survival. And so my study area is in the uh, is in the um, sorry the northeast corner of Arizona. It begins west at the uh, Cayenta Township and follows Highway 160 to Red Mesa in the east. The whole of the study area is a pretty arid, flat desert. It gets very little water, very little precipitation annually, about less than five inches. And you can see from the photos that the landscape is pretty flat and bare. There's very few buildings following US 160. Um, and so to determine where domestic dogs would be found in my study area, we're going to break down their needs into three groups, food, water, and navigable terrain. So for food, domestic dogs are going to rely on human developments. They rely on uh, human developments for scavenging and bagging, and even feral dogs will stay relatively close to human settlements, uh, usually to forage dump sites or other sources of food waste like trash or um, like poultry farms, any livestock, any agriculture will draw domestic dogs. Um, so proximity to human developments is going to be the main indicator of domestic dog habitat. For this project, I use buildings, so gas stations, grocery stores, restaurants, schools, medical facilities, and postal offices were all um, included because they were all major buildings that were in the study area. Human developments also includes roads, and I broke that into 25 mile per hour roads and 55 mile per hour roads, which would be the main freeways. Um, typically in a habitat analysis, you would want to stay away from roads, but because they're signs of human development, I broke it into two categories so that we could include the 25 mile per hour roads as uh, preferred habitat and exclude the 55 mile per hour roads. And finally would be land 
cover and slope. So dogs prefer developed areas, pastures, and wetlands were considered as well because of water scarcity. Um, barren land and shrub and scrub land was considered the least suitable in my study area. And then for slope, I had to look into dog ramp manufacturers to see um, the recommended degree of the range of a dog paw movement. And it was recommended that 18 degrees is best and 30 degrees is where it kind of stopped. So that's where I capped the slope. And a slope under 30 degrees is going to make ORV delivery easier too. So for my project, I adapted the recommended workflow from Esri for their suitability modeler. Um, and I kept step one and two basically the same. Essentially, step three would just be to locate the final um, target areas. But because I had to consider vehicle-based ORV delivery, I adapted that to use Boolean and buffers and intersects and erase tools to narrow down the final target area. So to derive the slope layer, I ended up converting 30 to 30 meter DEM raster files into points and I merged them to use the inverse distant weighted tool to interpolate the small gaps between them that I couldn't fix with the, um, when I was creating a raster mosaic. So that allowed me to create my slope and hill shape layers. And that was all I needed to do to prepare my raster data. To prepare my vector data, I just had to clip everything to my study area outline. And then not show, it's not shown here, but then I had to use that distance accumulation tool to derive distance layers. And that would be the end of the step one of the workflow, just preparing my data. And then step two was transforming the values and assigning them weight. So to do this, I used the suitability modeler in ArcPro. Um, first, I transformed the distance layers into the comparable values of a scale of one to 10. I made one the best habitat and 10 being the least preferred habitat. And then each layer was assigned a weight, which can be seen in table two five there. Um, I gave buildings the highest weight because they are indicators of human activity. Um, slope and lakes were given the least weight because slopes will be included in the Boolean and overlay and lakes have very, um, they're very variable in their, um, you know, in, the, in their actual water content. So because of climate change and because precipitation is so low, I couldn't confirm that all the lakes on my map did have water year round. Um, springs and wells were given more weight because they are sources of household water and they're sources of water for livestock, so they do get used more. This final map here shows the results of those two um, those two tools in creating the habitat map. So this is just for the domestic dog habitat and ORV delivery hasn't been considered yet. So to consider ORV delivery and reduce the target areas even more, um, I deviated from the suitability modeler workflow and instead used the locate, and instead of using the locate function, I reclassified the map so that suitability scores could be extracted as vector data. And then I use the Boolean AND tool to locate the areas that had a slope under 30 and a suitability score under four. I use the buffer tools to create a half mile buffer around the roads, the intersect tool to find the suitable areas that intersect 25 mile per hour roads, and then I use the erase tool to remove the buffer around 55 mile per hour roads. Since these highways receive a high volume of traffic and can be dangerous for dogs. And the final results showed that about 38.9% was uh, suitable for ORV delivery. 
So just with a score under four, a suitability score under four, we've already removed about 60% of the target area from consideration. So I repeated this for a score under three specifically because there were two main areas that seemed to have the highest um, suitability scores, and that was Chilton Beto in the southwest and Tolkien in the east. And by reducing it to a score under three, uh, we reduced the target areas to 8%. So that reduced, you know, like 92% of the, of the potential areas in my study area. So the first site, the uh, Chilton Beto chapter contains most of the area. You can see the border um, faintly in pink and that's the, the uh, suitable terrain falls entirely within the chapter. Um, at this point, I think the project can move forward by contacting the chapters that look like they have a higher probability of um, containing dogs, uh, domestic dogs that aren't accounted for. Um, that's really the goal of the project. I didn't include residential addresses, as you can see in the map, for privacy and because that could be a secondary step where you go in and then you could survey residents to determine vaccination status. You could um, contact representatives to see what the community needs are. Something interesting about this site is there are canyons to the south and to the west, and there's some forested mountain that going in and doing another habitat analysis to get even more specific could really help locate um, feral dogs in the area, unaccounted for feral dogs that can live in the canyon and maybe like get more water and shade there. The habitat could really be narrowed in. Um, the second site was the Tolican, formerly known as the Sweetwater chapter, and that was in the east of the study area. Something specific about this um, chapter is it's like most of the Navajo Nation in a food desert and traveling can be really hard for some of the residents. Uh, a lot of roads are not paved and exacerbate the travel times. It's roughly an hour to the nearest grocery store. Um, many of the elderly people who live here have to have food brought in. And that brought up like a another issue that could be considered uh, further along into a project like this, which would be uh, equity and finding areas that not only could support uh, domestic dogs, but also maybe uh, have a greater need of ORV delivery, like perhaps they're farther from veterinary clinics or the uh, income demographics are worse in one area than another, then that could be included in the analysis as well. So in conclusion, um, there are a lot of benefits to suitability modeling for domestic free roaming dog management. While a lot of these animals are accounted for, there are just there are so many more that aren't. So essentially, there are community dogs, there are free roaming dogs that can be tracked down and vaccinated through other means besides habitat mapping, like surveying residents, um, clinics. Uh, but the real issue is there are so many dogs on the Navajo Nation that right now, the veterinary clinics available just couldn't manage it even if they were accounted for. So suitability modeling could potentially allow ORV providers to go into the field and distribute these packets either by hand to dogs individually or in a way similar to how other wildlife has been handled with ORV deliveries. Um, the US has used this method to control 
rabies in uh, wildlife populations by specifically dropping the packets in preferred habitat. Um, so whether you did a mass vaccination or just drove around and vaccinated dogs through the vehicle-based ORV delivery, it would help, the suitability modeling would help target the optimal areas. It would reduce costs and travel time and it could be adjusted in any way that would meet the um, specific locality's needs. So if water was more available in one area, you could give it more or less weight and it would change the outcome of the map. So it's really a great tool because you can adjust the factors once the model has been created. Um, so for my project, I could see the next steps being including temporal factors like weather and temperature. Um, climate change has really made predicting rain hard on the Navajo Nation. That was something I kept seeing over and over in uh, some of the articles I was reading was just how much less rain they seem to be getting. So I think tracking that would would be the next best step for my project. Because um, then I could include streams, you could include, include like flow accumulation in areas to see where dogs would gather. Uh, contacting appropriate organizations and representatives could also help, um, help direct the project in a way that meets the specific needs of the chapter. And surveying residents could also indicate whether um, there is a need for vaccinating own dogs or if there are a number of unowned dogs known to be around the residents, uh, the residents' home that need vaccination. Um, this project could also be adapted for other dog management projects. There is non-surgical contraception, which works very similarly to ORVs where the contraceptive is put in a baited packet and given to dogs in the field. And then there's trap, neuter, release, or rescue adoptions, which require physically trapping the dog and a habitat suitability analysis could be used to determine where traps could go to uh, have the highest probability of capturing free roaming dogs. Um, the images here are from Best Friends. There are a lot of animal societies in the area that are working on this issue. Um, but it seems the biggest problem is the number of dogs versus the number of uh, animal care providers on the Navajo Nation is really preventing the issue from being managed. I can see this turning into something where ORV packets could be delivered in mass, maybe from helicopter in targeted areas, or again, just found, you know, finding more efficient ways to locate animals for vehicle-based ORV delivery. 